Hello, my name is Wink Griezmann, CEO and co-founder of The Things Industries. And welcome at yet another The Things conference. And this time it's going to be all about our LoRaWAN network server, The Things Stack. Um, uh, we are very excited to have you as a viewer and attendee together with a thousand uh, uh, participants. We do this conference together with uh, a set of valued partners that either are providing additional technology, uh, integrations, um, uh, data platforms, etc. And they will show how their product works together with the Think Stack. We have a great set of uh, speakers provided by these partners that will show you all kinds of workshops and presentations on uh, their, their products. We, as the Things Industries and the Things Network, uh, uh, are on a mission to make you successful with your LoRaWAN solution. And that's what we do. In case you don't know who we are, just a little re recap on what we do. With the Things Network, we help you go from zero to one. With awesome documentation, great uh, knowledge resources, how to get started. And we we take you to this very hard process of going from an idea to having a first version that you can run into production. Once you are, you're ready to scale and you want to deploy your sensor applications on many sites, many locations, with many, many sensors, we help you with the things industries, with support, uh, additional uh, software as a service hosting. We provide an SLA, we provide all kinds of additional uh, services to make you successful with your uh, uh, solution. And we have all kinds of different deployment options for any LoRaWAN solution you can imagine. So, a little update. Of course, we had our conference earlier this year where we showed some nice numbers, but uh, the growth is, is steady and we're going very, very strong. So, the developer ecosystem is ever growing. So, we're nearing 150,000 developers registered or on the platform exploring LoRaWANs, exploring our products uh, in the community uh, edition. The amount of devices that are registered by our enterprise customers and our community is increasing at exponential pace as well, as we are expecting to hit 1 million de registered devices somewhere uh, uh, near in this summer. The amount of connected gateways is increasing as well. At the moment, we're supporting more than 30, uh, 33,000 gateways all around the globe. And all these gateways uh, and all these, all, all these devices are sen sending messages. And at the moment, and every second, we route 800 devices. That is many billions a year. Also, the analyst community is very optimistic around the future of LP1. And this is a nice hockey stick they, they, they predict. So if you look at the device ecosystem, so if you want to get hands-on and get an off-the-shelf uh, uh, device, you see that there's basically a LoRa device for everything. We have hundreds and hundreds of different devices running on our network. And basically, they are used in a lot of different contexts. In the previous conferences, we ha we've gone uh, into very much detail in all these different use cases, so um, feel free to check that out as well on our YouTube channel and in the links in the descriptions uh, as well. But, for instance, we're doing LoRa networks on ships, we're doing them in warehouses, industrial sites, even in museums, uh, in retail stores, and in office buildings. And, and literally, in any, uh, uh, any of these places, you can find a use case where you can drive value with LoRa. So, so where do we see this IoT success? We have so many enterprises as customers, and where are th what's the pattern uh, that brings them to an IoT success? So just let's take a smart building. Um, and uh, if you look at a smart building, uh, there, there's a lot of data you can gather. And sometimes that data is very small, like a temperature sensor or temper temperature measurement. And sometimes it's a huge amount of streaming analytics telemetry data or even video streams. And what we call that is the thin edge of small sensor devices and the thick edge of high streaming uh, data generating video uh, or audio or, or vibration. 
And then if you look at the spectrum that's used, there's all kinds of different tec uh, connectivity technologies that are able to deliver that data into an application. So at the thin edge, we have uh, LP1 technologies like LoRa. In the middle, we see Wi-Fi being used. And more and more, we see 5G and private LTE uh, being used to deliver uh, huge amounts of data. So if you then look at, for instance, a smart building, you see that on the thin edge you have small pieces of data, sensor data, uh, around tracking, streaming, telemetry. And when it gets more tough and you need more bandwidth, you need Wi-Fi or 5G, you get into vision AI or s even assisted AR that needs huge amount of bandwidth. So, for instance, take this smart building where you, on the thin edge have, for instance, temperature and humidity, where you want to measure the conditions of a certain room. Uh, maybe you have inventory count. Uh, you can uh, measure the presence uh, or the occupancy of rooms or the presence of, uh, of desks. Maybe you want to have cameras to maybe uh, uh, detect uh, situations around worker safety. And maybe you want to use AR because you want to include uh, uh, assisted operations that is being uh, 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 where instructions are being given remotely. And if you use that in this uh, uh, smart building, what you're going to see is that the smart building consists of all these different sensors and all these different cameras and all these different data points. And LoRa is a component in that whole. And in an ideal situation, these data points are driven towards a digital twin through an IoT broker. And after that, they are being fed to the relevant business applications, the ERPs, maybe data sharing platforms, dashboards, where they can really turn into business uh, value. So what's critical is that this thin edge that's driven by this LoRa technology, the integration of that technology is key and that needs to be very simple. And now we're here in 2021 and when you talk about integration, we're not talking about large complex IT projects, we're talking about low code, no code uh, uh, integrations where with simple webhooks and simple integrations, you can connect all the systems you like. And the definition of a developer in the current age is changing. Uh, uh, the definition of a developer is not only the one that is writing the code and, and is developing this, uh, 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 this integration, but it's these enterprise developers, the citizen developer, that's able to connect them through simple configurations. And what we've seen uh, with large enterprise customers that have embraced this movement and that have architects and these low-code, no-code developers, they are their go-to-market is way faster and their uh, probability for su IoT success is also way higher. So making the integration of any LoRa network and LoRa sensor into the enterprise organization is the product mission of the thing stack. And now we're going to switch to Johan, who's going to tell you all about the product. Thank you, Inke. Hey, my name is Johan Stocking. I am a CTO and co-founder of the Things Industries. And welcome to this conference. And I'm going to uh, tell you a bit, like Inke said, about our product vision uh, of the Things Stack. So uh, what, is, what is the Things Stack? So it's a network server. And a network server uh, sits in right between the physical infrastructure with the gateways and the end devices uh, here on the left hand and then uh, on the right hand, you see the integrations and the applications, and these are all equally important. The network server is really at the heart of this all, uh, and that is really also what the uh, Think Stack is mostly all about. Uh, but you also see other you know, gateway specific features in the Think Stack and also application layer and integration features. So we, we, um, uh, uh, we cover all these things uh, in, in our product. <coughs> Here's a little introduction video about what the Think Stack really is. To operate a LoRaWAN network, you need a LoRaWAN network server to manage your gateways and allow the devices to securely communicate with the cloud. It is at the heart of every LoRaWAN network. The network server's main responsibility is assuring the security, data routing, and battery optimization of the LoRaWAN nodes. The Things Industries LoRaWAN stack is built up of multiple loosely coupled components to maximize flexibility and scalability. 
The stack is compliant with all versions of the LoRaWAN specifications and all the official frequency plans. It supports devices under classes A, B, and C, backend interfaces for passive roaming, remote multicast setups, fragmented data block transport, application layer clock synchronization, and firmware updates over the air. The Things Industries provides the LoRaWAN stack as hosted or managed service, or you can host it yourself on-premise or in your private cloud. It's your choice between full service and full control. The core components of the stack are the gateway server, the network server, the join server, the application server, the identity server. The gateway server manages the gateways and creates secure connections with the network server. It supports both the open source legacy UDP forwarder as well as the new basic station protocol, which enables remote updates and configuration. As both the protocols are open, there is no vendor lock-in and no dependency on a single gateway provider. The network server implements the LoRaWAN protocol, the core of the network layer management. It validates the authenticity and integrity of devices, deduplicates uplinks, selects the gateways used for downlinks, and sends ADR commands to optimize the data rate of devices. Our network server supports LoRaWAN 1.0x and 1.1 version of the LoRaWAN specification. The application server is responsible for the decryption of the received sensor data and it encrypts data sent to the end devices. From the application server, you can easily link your own data management system or quickly launch template integrations with the main IoT platforms of AWS, Azure, and Google Cloud. The join server is the component responsible for storing the root keys of the devices. It uses the root keys to generate session keys used by the network server and the application server. We even offer to run the join server separately. For example, in your trusted domain, to take full control over the secure storage of the root keys. The identity server registers users, applications, devices, and gateways. This allows you to run a scalable, multi-tenant network distributed over multiple regions around the world. The LoRaWAN stack is connected to the Packet Broker. The Packet Broker enables LoRaWAN traffic to flow between LoRaWAN networks, allowing different private and public networks to exchange traffic. This peering between networks can be done at the click of a button, granting you access to many other LoRaWAN networks in the world, including the Things Network. All the functionality are exposed via APIs, so you can integrate the LoRaWAN stack in your billing, network operations, device management, and organizational systems. The Things Industries provides a complete offering that fits your corporate requirements. Our customers can choose from the following deployment scenarios. Cloud hosted, fully managed service where we host the stack in our infrastructure. Cloud Marketplace Launcher, run the service in your own cloud account by launching the stack from the AWS, Azure, or Google Cloud Marketplace. Dedicated Cloud Hosted, fully managed service where we host the stack in a dedicated infrastructure. Self-hosted, self-managed service where you host and manage your own stack in your own infrastructure. Our extensive know-how and years of experience with LoRaWAN are embedded in our products and take away the complexity of building LoRaWAN solutions, allowing you to focus on creating value-adding applications that differentiate your business. Our team is happy to support you in your next IoT product. Request a demo now. 
So our main architecture, here you see the gateways on the left. They are connected to a gateway server. Uh, in, the, in the heart of the, is, of the stack is the network server. On the right hand, you see the application server, uh, which also includes all the integrations to uh, cloud platforms, but you can also use uh, HTTP webhooks or MQTT. Uh, then we have a lot of supporting services like uh, the join server, identity server, uh, monitoring services and all, uh, a, a lot of other microservices um, uh, for enterprise, for clustering, uh, for generating QR codes. Uh, we have everything in our stack. So we have our key features. Uh, of the thing stack are obviously that we support all LoRaWAN versions in all regions, all device modes. Uh, we have support for class A, B, and C and multicast. Uh, everything is fully API driven. Uh, in fact, the console, the really nice web interface that we have is using our API and you can use that API directly from your, uh, from your own applications. Uh, we also have a, a command line interface also for everything, so you can use uh, the Think Stack in your scripting, uh, which is really nice. The, the core of the Think Stack is open source. You can find that on GitHub. It's one of the largest uh, open source projects that originates from the Netherlands. Um, and there is native packet broker support in every the Think Stack deployment, uh, also in our open source uh, edition. Um, what's also really nice is the device repository. I think that's one of the things that we are uh, most proud of this year. And I'm also going to uh, show a little bit about that uh, in, in a few minutes. Um, and then on the integration side, we have native integrations with AWS IoT. Uh, we are working on a really nice native integration with Azure IoT. Uh, and like I said, you also have some lower level integrations to work with uh, streaming data through MQTT webhooks. Uh, and we also have uh, data storage. Uh, and finally, an integration with uh, LoRa Cloud for geolocation, joint server, and a LoRa Edge device and application services. So regardless of our features, uh, everything is included in our different deployment models. Uh, so the ThinkStack is really a product, but we, we really designed it to be super versatile in how and where and when it can be deployed. So um, our main offering is the ThinkStack Cloud. That's our flagship uh, uh, offering with an SLA. Uh, all the features are in there. It's multi-tenant, it's, um, uh, it's uh, uh, multi-region, uh, so you can access the thing stack uh, with low latencies from everywhere around the world. Um, but uh, if you need to run the thing stack in your AWS account, you can use uh, the AWS launcher. If you need to have the thing stack uh, running on your physical infrastructure, um, this could also be in AWS or in, in Azure, uh, but it could also be on, uh, on premises or on bare metal. Uh, you can use an enterprise license. Uh, and we also have a dedicated cloud offering, which is dedicated infrastructure that's fully managed by us and also uh, comes with an SLA. So these are the, the, the four commercial models that we have, besides obviously uh, the Things Network, which is our community edition of the Things Stack, which is free to use, but it comes without SLA and only with community support. Uh, so on the platform side, on the integration side, we, uh, we are uh, working with uh, lots of partners and we are adding uh, new partners in every release, which is really nice. So uh, you can uh, click here in the console uh, which integration you want to configure for your application. And um, underneath this is also driven by an open source repository. So if you are building an IoT platform and you want to have your logo here, uh, then you can go to uh, our GitHub, the Things Network account, Account, the webhook templates uh, repository and you can open a pull request and uh, configure your own integration and we'll make it part of our next release. Um, we also invested a lot in our documentation uh, so we are uh, informing you about the new um, uh, things that we added to our uh, uh, to our latest versions but we also have extensive step-by-step -step guides and details and uh, uh, ex explanations about uh, how, how all the how all the things work, and also about how our API uh, works. 
Um, so uh, the thing stack, our enterprise edition, it's also what we use in the community network, is multi-tenant, and that means that you, all our customers have their, their own environment with their own users, their own gateways, and their own applications, which is a globally distributed uh, deployment, and that's also what really makes us unique in the LoRaWAN ecosystem, uh, and that is, um, that's, that's really also at the heart of the design uh, of the thing stack. Uh, the thing stack is API first. Uh, that means that all the features, by definition, have an API endpoint, um, and that uh, only then we can implement, for example, uh, the UX in the console, and only then we can add the commands in our command line interface. So that means that you, as a developer, can uh, make use of all the features that we have in the thing stack through our API. So our uh, device repository, that's really something that we brought to the thing stack in the last year. And we have been working a lot with the device maker community and we're also very thankful for all the contributions that they made uh, and the time that they invested to, um, to contribute their devices to the device repository. And what it really is, it is a, a GitHub open source repository where uh, device makers can declare the models of their devices, uh, pictures, but also the sensors that they have and um, uh, other characteristics about the device. Uh, but not only that, also the uh, LoRaWAN and device profile, so all the settings that the network server needs to activate the device. So the LoRaWAN version, physical parameters version, you know, all the, all the, all the, all the knobs and, and, and the small details about every device. Uh, and um, uh, uh, moreover, also the codex, so the scripts, to decode binary payload into meaningful data uh, and uh, the other way around. So that's all in the device repository and we made it really easy to onboard devices. So if you go uh, in the console and you, um, you click on the button to uh, add a new device, uh, by default you can uh, select here the vendor so you can find the, uh, the device makers. So these are all the device makers that are uh, in, the, um, in the device repository. So for example, the Tactelic, uh, a Kona all-in-one uh, smart uh, room sensor or something. Uh, and uh, you see here some information, a picture. You, you see, okay, you know, this is my device, beautiful. Uh, it shows you here which LoRaWAN version it has. Just some uh, information, but underneath it already configures the device correctly. So you only have to uh, configure you know, some identification about the particular device. And that is really unique and nice feature of uh, the thing stack. Um, so we have also native support for Basic Station, which is a uh, open source uh, uh, packet forwarder, uh, which is much better than what we have been using in the past. Uh, it is secure, it's authenticated, uh, it allows for uh, some uh, remote configuration as well uh, as um, uh, remote monitoring of how the gateway is doing. And we are working closely with all the leading gateway vendors uh, to have nice uh, and really uh, stable basic station support and we are really happy uh, to uh, uh, to partner with all the main gateway vendors uh, to make this happen. Um, so what we have on the roadmap uh, <laughs> is uh, onboarding via the device repository. So the device repository is not only about end devices, but a gateway is also a device, and we also want to put that in the device repository. Um, the, uh, the thing stack is also really event-driven, uh, also at the heart of the design, and uh, we want to make that easier and more accessible for uh, users. Uh, so we're going to allow to retrieve historical events, to filter events, to group events in a, in a better and uh, user-friendlier way. Um, we're working on a map, a global map of all the gateways, not only connected to the Things Network, but also to private, network, private networks, and to put that in one beautiful global map. Uh, of course, only if you want to share your gateway location on that map. Uh, but that's also going to be really useful to find other networks, peering partners to exchange traffic with. Um, like I said, we have the uh, really nice Azure integration on the roadmap. Uh, we already have a basic integration with Azure through the webhooks, but we're going to have a really native integration soon. Um, the uh, routing policies uh, of Packer Broker can almost be configured in a console. It's going to be part of our next patch release. Uh, I have already a preview of that in my Packet Broker presentation later today. Um, we're adding more insight in how the uh, peering is going, what the balances are between your network and other networks. Uh, we're also going to show you that. 
uh, and also we want to invest uh, even more in making our stack uh, easy for developers to work with. So we're going to work on SDKs for the main uh, languages like Go, Node.js, Python, um, and also improve the user experience to work with our API. It's already working really well, but we really want to make it seamless and really easy uh, and uh, make sure that you don't spend time on working with our API and implementing everything, but really add value uh, without writing too much code. And finally, we want to show the um, analysis of your, uh, the health of your gateway and device fleet uh, through seeing what is the packet loss rate, what are the RF uh, qualities and things like that. So that's what we have on the roadmap. So um, the Things Network is really do-it-yourself. Uh, audience is uh, people that are tinkering with devices, setting up collaborative networks that have a really nice societal impact, um, that don't have a business case associated with it. Um, we have the Things Network also for anyone to test if their devices are working, uh, small batches um, uh, collaborating with each other in applications and uh, with organizations and gateways and everything. Um, but it's really a, a service that is, uh, is not intended for commercial use. Uh, it's, it's, it can be used for that, but it's not, not intended uh, to do so. We have uh, uh, the thing stack open source for people who also want to do it yourself on the network side. So who want to set up their, uh, their LoRaWAN network server themselves. And what's really nice now is that with Packet Broker, you can connect your the thing stack open source directly to the Things Network, so you can make use of the coverage provided by the Things Network and the other way around. So we've been talking also about v uh, V3 a lot, so when we uh, talk about the Things Stack, uh, what we actually mean is a V3 version 3 is our major version of our product uh, since we started in 2015. Um, V2 is currently still running at the community network uh, next to V3, and we are slowly uh, shutting down uh, V2. So again, I want to remind everyone here again about the timelines of when we are going to sunset uh, V2. So we have migration tools available and that allows you to migrate devices and Neira is going to talk about later today uh, in, a, in a session about uh, uh, N device migration. And um, what is new here is that even if you migrate your gateway now from V2 to V3, it still feeds data back to V2. That's something that we changed since uh, the last conference. Uh, so you can now migrate your gateways independent of migrating devices. So do migrate your gateways as soon as possible and do migrate your end devices as soon as possible because V2 is going to be read-only from July and unavailable from January and then everything will be running on V3. Everything will stay connected uh, on the gateway side because we will uh, connect all those gateways through Packet Broker. But it's a good opportunity to go to your gateway, update them, and make sure you can remotely access your gateways. So that's V3 uh, and V2. Uh, another thing that I wanted to announce is that you can now get a certification for the Thing Stack. So you can show everyone how well you know the Thing Stack and uh, that you can uh, set up networks, you can configure everything, application and everything. Uh, so that's really nice. And uh, you can use that also in your professional work. So um, connecting all the LoRa networks, um, Packet Broker is really at the heart of, uh, of the global LoRaWAN deployment. Um, it is the backbone for LoRaWAN traffic. It serves all the thing stack deployments regardless of their deployment model. Um, so uh, every uh, the thing stack deployment can be connected, and since we also now have passive roaming support for Packet Broker, you can also uh, connect your uh, LoRaWAN network server even if it's not the thing stack. And I have more details about that in my Packet Broker talk uh, later today. Um, here's a short video about what Packet Broker really is, and again more details in my talk. Packet Broker is a service which allows for LoRaWAN networks to exchange traffic. It allows devices to use many different networks while ensuring end-to-end -end encryption of the data. The benefits for device operators are increased network redundancy, optimized spectrum utilization, optimized battery consumption, and extended coverage. 
The market shows that 90% of all LoRaWAN devices operate on networks specifically set up for that application. The Packet Broker allows these networks to be opened up and leveraged for increased collaboration and potential monetization. The concept is simple. You run a use case on a LoRaWAN network with a set of devices. You can choose to open up your network to others, directly benefiting from increased coverage while ensuring end-to-end -end encryption of your data. You are in control of which network capabilities are available to peered networks. This is happening already in a series of use cases. In a smart city environment, different stakeholders have different network requirements. They can all configure their networks to their needs, yet they can define rules on how the coverage is shared. The motives range from monetizing the excess capacity to improving device performance to making sure public funds are used for an open community network, like opening to the Things Network, and can be leveraged by the complete local economy. An example, for instance, is a configuration where citizens run a community network the municipality runs a network for smart city applications, and the regional utility company runs a network for smart metering. With the Packet Broker, they can share their networks in such a configuration that the quality of service of the anchor use case per network is ensured. Existing logistics ecosystems use the Packet Broker to make sure that sensors operate throughout the supply chain, where every stakeholder is responsible for the coverage in their area and at their points of presence. Systems integrators around the world have built many local LoRaWAN networks in supermarkets, offices, warehouses, and many more types of buildings. Using the Packet Broker can give an additional redundancy. For companies that service multiple customers with IoT solutions, the Packet Broker can easily share traffic among tenants they manage. Offering IoT as a service and building an asset around the coverage on different points of presence, gaining a stronger position in their segment. Network operators that provide specialized networks and offer a guarantee on exclusive coverage can use the Packet Broker for monetization, mostly in the case of nationwide networks and satellite LoRa network operators. Want to tap into the synergy of connecting LoRaWAN networks? Go to packetbroker.net or www.thethingsindustries.com and start connecting any LoRaWAN network to the global exchange for LP WAN traffic. So Packet Broker serves different the thing stack deployments, but also it combines different use cases. You can combine coverage that is for uh, train stations. You can use that coverage in your hotel chains if they are close to a railway station and the other way around. It's really beautiful. So um, what we also have is a Packet Broker configuration, and it's really going to be as simple as this. Uh, you can configure per network if you have Packet Broker uh, um, traffic exchange enabled, and also which uh, type of messages you want to uh, exchange with another network. Uh, and we really made it this easy. So we go back to Wienke to talk about the program. Thanks, Johan, for this overwhelming amount of uh, information. It's really good we've got the entire day because there's so much to share, there's, there's so much detail, there's so much features that we want to um, uh, tell you all about, uh, and about this product. So uh, the first part uh, uh, is going to be this morning, uh, it's going to be our team explaining about the ThinkStack, how to get started uh, quickly. Jon is going to tell everything uh, about uh, the packet broker, the, the, the backbone of all global LoRaWAN traffic. Um, uh, 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 MCF88 is going to uh, focus on uh, showing how Class C works with the Think Stack. Um, uh, and later today, we're going to talk about gateways, of course, about the LoRa Basic Station uh, uh, protocol, the deep dive, all the gateways that uh, now support Basic Station, the uh, preferred uh, gateway connection and gateway management protocol of, of choice. Uh, and we're going to jump into all kinds of different gateways and how to connect them. Um, uh, uh, um, uh, starting from 2 p.m. Uh, Central uh, European, European time, uh, we're going to uh, uh, explore how we have integrated uh, the LoRa cloud, how we work together uh, with uh, Semtech on the uh, uh, LoRa modem E, uh, and how that all nicely integrates, and how this awesome multi-radio product works together with our, with our stack. 
where we're going to uh, talk about the different webhooks uh, use cases uh, uh, around cold chain monitoring by Datacake, and we're going to have quite a, 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 an, an interesting amount of uh, partners that are going to explain quickly uh, and concisely how to integrate their platform, the thing stack. Uh, um, and then something that we are super excited about is that we're going to show you how to do firmware over the air up, update uh, uh, using LoRaWAN and the STM32WL uh, uh, LoRa Silicon. And we're going to also show you how to run the ThinkStack Enterprise uh, locally on a local computer, in this, uh, this case a Raspberry Pi, to run the whole stack completely local, uh, locally on site if you have a factory or something, a situation where you do not have an internet backhaul. And at the end of the day, we're going to focus on how to migrate from the V2 to the state-of-the-art V3 uh, solution. Johan already uh, explained a bit about it, but we're going to get into detail and we're going to uh, make sure that it's super easy for you to migrate your devices and gateways from the old platform to the new shiny V3 uh, LoRaWAN network server, the thing stack. So... Um, this was the opening keynote. This was the introduction. Um, we're going to, again, share a lot of information with you today. You can see uh, all these videos afterwards online on our YouTube channel. Uh, but we're really happy to have you here on the platform. And uh, the, it really rest us, only rests us to say, enjoy the conference and have a great day. Mm -hmm.